and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for the return of Championless Elusives, a pretty cheap deck to put together um, as far as decks are concerned if you want to have uh, something fun to play um, in ranked. Um, yeah, we're going we're going Championless Elusives. The uh, you know like we of course this deck traditionally has Zed in it, but I don't know we had success taking out Zed. Um, last time and playing like shared spoils instead where we get to grant the top three units of our deck plus one plus one and draw one of them because just everybody has blockers on the ground kind of everywhere and uh, we're trying to win with all these elusives that's really what we're doing is we're pumping up elusives and winning with those and zed doesn't really fit that plan even though zed's a good threat um yeah so that's kind of that's kind of our plan um you know, it's not, nothing too flashy. I have made the deck worse. As you can see, we have 12 Freljord cards in here because we're, of course, playing Elixir of Iron Omenhawk, but now we have the new Freljord cards of Shared Spoils and Fury of the North. Fury of the North really helps finish games out. Now, that, that does certainly make Kinku Wayfinder worse. And I remember last time we didn't do a ton with Kinku Wayfinder. You know, like, we may miss on the Allegiance a little bit more with having... Um, the 12 Freljord card. So that, and Kinku Wayfinder is another card, you know, that does not have Elusive on its own. So that's something that to kind of watch out for if if it really underperforms, it may be something that we want to replace. Um, but, you know, we're keeping it in there for now. It was just fine last time. Thanks, Bulls. Um, so yeah, so let's go ahead and uh, get started. Have you seen the Starlight variant? I have not. I could see, I could see playing Starlight seer instead of wayfinder i could see doing that just basically like if if we're looking to replace wayfinder starlet seer would be perfectly fine but yeah here we go let's play some championless elusives go play five games over in ranked why does vi have challenger but shen is left without it like what yeah, Shen could definitely just be buffed. We were we were talking right before we hit the record um, how like there's no champions in here and and because um, there's no real elusive champions with Ionia, but but maybe like you, we could give Shen elusive. Shen would fit that that Wayfinder spot perfectly. Like, would that make? Is that what we need to do to make Shen playable? Is give Shen elusive? Because Shen looks very similar to the Navori Conspirator, you know, like with, um... You know, looks like a, you know, kind of ninja style and something that would be elusive. You think that would be in thematically incorrect for Shen? Hey, Felipe, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub. Welcome to the channel. Let's get some hype votes in the chat for our new sub. Hmm. So I'm thinking like attack and then shared spoils. Maybe I'm supposed to just play a Green Glade duo though and be able to attack for three elusive. No, I think I want to attack Shared Spoils. <clears throat> I think I want to grant those top three units of the deck plus one plus one right away. Alright, that's our second sub of the day. Let's update that. Working towards that sub goal. Okay, Shen is a tank ninja in League of Legends that can taunt. So giving him Challenger would make sense. Okay. Interesting. A tank Challenger that can taunt. Hold up. 
They're attacking for a lot, you know? We have to try to win this race still. There's always a way out. We're attacking for 10. We'll play the Blade Scout. Just attack for 10. Keep the elixir of iron. I'm gonna keep this elixir of iron available. I'm not gonna play the omen hawk. Alright, so that would kill the blade scout. Damage in. I ought to show you the sights of Bill's water. The sights are fine. The smells, on the other hand. This is really messy. This just gets a chal you know, challenge like the Green Glade duo, and then Misfortune Trigger kills it. Gosh, this is really messy. Cause normally, I'd want to play the Jewel Protector there <clears throat> and pump up uh, Conspirator. Oh, come on. Just like hunting thresher geese. No, kind of feel like I shouldn't have gone with the shared spoils now that that uh, turn two, but this turn was just so incredibly good. It's a killer. This misfortune's gonna level up. I mean, if I just didn't play that... Wait, if I just didn't play that Omen Hawk... I mean, obviously, I did, did know we are going to have Green Glade Duo on top. If I just didn't play that Omen Hawk... Um, yeah, this these two together would have been lethal. Like, if I just played Duo, Duo, Omen Hawk. Good attack for nine. Yeah, the cards to win that game. I don't know, that was a pretty great turn getting uh, 
those cards, but I guess champions are good. You know, we don't have any champions in our deck, but those two, Misfortune and Quinn, were amazing. I had a I had a really good hand. As far as my deck goes, I I had a good hand. I, I think I probably should have won that. No, no, we would have had nine because we had we had six. Like that was six total. But you play one green glade, then you play the other green glade that bumps that uh, pumps the first one to make it seven, and then you play the Omen Hawk that would pump both of them to make it nine. But I... Lesson learned there, I should have just played... I should have played the 3-2 Green Glade duo on turn two and attacked with that on turn two. That was the big lesson that I learned there that game. I should have just played the 3-2 the on turn two, not play the Shared Spoils on turn two. That was a mistake. Yeah, the bar you missed the barkeep. Um, how the games go? Honestly, pretty surprising. We we had really poor hands all five games. We mulliganed either three or four cards every single game. Just never really had um, you know, never really had anything come together that well. Never had um, like never really did very much with barkeep. Never had barkeep plus chronicler, for example. But yet we still went three and two. Eyes open. Watch your branches. Till. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes, the 4-3 that I drew would have been a 3-2 because it would not have gotten the pump from me playing the Omen Hawk the previous turn. That is true. Yeah, it's really turn two. It's a good good lesson learned. Go just play the play the elusive on turn two. Don't go for the shared spoils on turn two. That's what I really needed to do differently that game. You cannot escape. This return card has been looking great today. But like, talk about a dream setup, right? Double Eye of the Dragon and uh, Shadow Assassin and being able to bounce Shadow Assassin and put it back in. Isn't that just like the absolute dream for their deck? It's so much value that you gain. This, ugh, this dog behind me is snoring loud. <laughs> She's just laying, laying there and snoring loud. She's got her bed with her pillow. Living the life. No, not no. I don't really. Uh, Wick Helm.
my spirit, not my fist. Pilfer Goods is a, is a really good card against me, you know, taking my elusives, especially with me pumping them up with Shared Spoils and Omen Hawk. It's a very good card against me. Yeah, the hand size limit is 10. So they're at 9 right now. And the board limit is 6. So if they want to play something, they just destroy one of these ephemerals. Brayfin's nice. So it's hitting... Okay, me, the 2-2, two -two, and the 4-4. Four -four. Okay. Let's see, so next turn's gonna be turn seven. So if I cast this, I'll have like, uh, I'll have eight total mana. So I won't be able to play like Jewel Protector and have Deny or Fury of the North. I think I may not play the Shared Spoils. that extra mana for spales. Never lost a fair game. Or played one. Well that's just plain rude. So they're doing that for a second spell so that they get these um, draglings. I don't know if dragons, dragling, or uh, Eye of the Dragons never really looked better than it has this game. They've had a great, great Eye of the Dragon game. And just pretty great game in general, but. All right, so we have 15, 17, 19. So I have 19 damage now. Elusive. By playing Windfarer Hatchling, it would be 19 damage. Not enough to win.
So Fate's at 6 out of 8. goods. Things they're going to be able to take. Yeah, they're going to be able to level up Twisted Fate and take Elusive. Why do they have to have a leveled up Twisted Fate? I mean, I don't think there's anything I can do about it. It's just all burst speed. The warning shot. Everything's just burst speed. Yeah, it's either will this or just play Jewel Protector and pump up the Blade Scout and then next turn, you know, have like Blade Scout plus Windfarer Hatchling and just try to fight through a leveled up Twisted Fate. Which is not easy. I just don't think that Will of Ionia on Twisted Fate really matters. Because, yeah, they just have Pilfer Goods. So, yeah, they would just cast Pilfer Goods and then replay their Twisted Fate. Now, this game's heating up. Which deck do you prefer, Twisted Fate and Karma or Twisted Fate and Ezreal? Um, probably Twisted Fate and Karma. The Ezreal deck's gonna be... It's probably gonna be better against other uh, control decks because you have the combo finish with Ezreal. Yeah, yeah, this is I'm definitely risking it. Yeah, hatchling first would make a would would be better as far as red cards go. Definitely risking it playing that card first. But we're in it. We're in a horrible spot. I needed like as much damage as as possible, so I'm going with the the thing that gives me the most damage possible.
kind of how today's gone. Like, their their hand was just so perfect. Just every single turn. Ever since turn two. You know, having three of those... You know, just having, like, those Eye of the Dragons. Remember that return... Rec the Recall return on the Shadow Assassin is just so perfect. Everything was. Basically, ever since, like, turn two on, you know, for nine turns of that game, you could say what, like, go through, like, their, their turns of, like, the cards they have. It's just, it was super ideal. I think we keep the rest of these. They had nothing else. So basically, I don't want to play Green Blade Duo and be weak to make it rain. And maybe, maybe that means I should have mulliganed a little bit differently because of make it rain. Let's get card. Deal me in. Yep. Who says I don't share? We're gonna have a pretty devastating withering wheel here in a little bit. Grace Claw. Yeah. What's up, Storm? Yeah, lots of people here on stream today. It's awesome. Not doing the best winning games, but that's okay. Funny the hand life deals with, don't you think? It's a sharp tongue you've got there, River Snake. That's okay. You've been playing this deck all week and loving it? Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. Um, I think the, the last deck that we lost to was a really good matchup. Um, a, like a Twisted Fate Lee Sin deck. I, I think that was a great matchup for us. It's just their hand was so great. It was just so... It was just perfect. They picked the wrong row. 
is a way out. So close. Fourteen. Then just gain that life off Vile Feast. So close to getting them. Six damage. We need like more than atrocity. I didn't play anything. gonna hold up this Will of Ionium. Will of Ionia. Like, no, may, like maybe I just lost a Ruination. I was thinking get get above where this is doing two damage, but maybe I just, just shouldn't do that because of Ruination. Yeah, they're going with. They're going for the atrocity kill. Basically, that was the problem with the open attack was uh, Withering Whale. Withering Whale would have killed all those things that I had. And so I need to play the, the seven drop to protect from Withering Whale. All right, GG's. Wait, Hextex Transmogulator to deal with Unyielding? That's that's what we call going deep right there. That's going deep into the bag of tricks. Before pulling out Hextex Transmogulator to deal with the Undying. Or the Unyielding, sorry. Unyielding Spirit. I want to attack. Oh, you don't have the attack token. So Mulligan Will of Ionia. Will of Ionia could be like the key card against like a Radiant Guardian in this matchup. Sweet. But it's not really something that I wanted in my opener. Sure. Yeah, there's not really any champions that really fit too well in this deck. Which is why we're going championless. Grace Claw! Getting that Twitch Prime sub. Y'all get some hype for our new sub. Thanks, provision. Yeah, I like I like this deck too. Yeah, yeah, I'm up. I suppose. Hmm. 
Certainly considering play, like blocking with the Blade Scout and then bouncing my Blade Scout. I guess that would maybe be better with the Conspirator. Like, pump this thing up. And Shade. Six awesome months keeping that sub going. Thank you, Shade. I don't know. That's probably too cute. Maybe. Maybe not. See, I only have... I only have six points of damage right now. We're like in in too much threat of losing this next turn. Yeah, it's basically an updated version of Kinku Elusives, yep. Yeah, I don't like yeah, I don't like a battle fury. I have question is like what do you think about playing a battle fury to steal some games? I'm I'm playing the three I'm playing three of the Fury of the Norths, which I think those do a good job of stealing games at a much reduced cost from Battle Fury. We can do this. That card's a problem. That is a problem. Keep running, Kay. Good draw. I don't want to play stuff before combat. I don't want to give them the opportunity to play Lux this turn. Like, I play Jewel Protector, they play Lux. And then... Uh, then we untap, then I play this pre-combat, then they get to play something else pre-combat. I don't want to give that opportunity. It doesn't really matter if Life Blade's a 4-4 or a 7-7. It's a lethal attacker. Two lethal attackers, and I got a Will of Ionia. Arguably, I could have used both Elixir of Irons to save my 2 2 at that point. Alright, and we have a Deny. We should be good. Should be good. Yeah, that could end up being a clutch deny draw. We'll see what they got. Why would I even play that? I don't know. Show my opponent that I got stuff, I guess. We could just do this. Okay. 
<laughs> yeah, just flex him. I guess. I like deny one of those and then also Will of Ionia their thing. <laughs> What do you think is the best Sejuani deck to climb with? I saw the uh, Misfortune version and the Swain version. I have Sejuani, but neither Misfortune nor Swain. Swain can have Forcecraft three of one. I like this. I would recommend the Swain version. I think that that version's better. Um, I also really like Ash, like uh, playing just Ash with Sejuani, especially if you've got the Ashes from the login bonus. So the, the Blade Scouts are kind of tough, like, usually we'd be keeping the Blade Scouts, but they're kind of tough against a deck that's all about, um, it's all about doing cheap amount of damage. You know, y'all know what I'm talking about, the four mana deal two, two things, Static Shock. There we go, it's all about Static Shock. Okay, you have three ashes? Yeah. Um. We each hold a world within. Well then, yeah, I'd recommend this deck. Right here. And then, besides that, I would recommend the Swain version next. Of the North, the dark beckons. I feel like, like, if I attack with Shadow Assassin and they block, and then I Elixir of Iron to protect my Shadow Assassin, I feel like all they would, all they would do is just, like, bounce theirs uh, with, like, return, with that return card, retreat return, whatever it is. Darn. They're supposed to be scared. Nobody blocks with Eye of the Dragon. Gotta be scared. Would I say that Swain is a safer craft than Misfortune? They're about the same. Kind of which one would you enjoy playing more? We're gonna have some pumped up units. I think our next two units are gonna be pumped up like three times. I think there's still two shared spoils. Um, or one shared, like two more cards for, for the shared spoils and the two cards for the um, Omen Hawk. So yeah, we're gonna have. Two of them are going to be plus three, plus three, I think. So that's the first one, the Hatchling. Stop. There, Ezreal's at four out of eight. Hmm. 
don't love double seven drop. turn for them. We could just save their mana. Yeah, that's a great turn. I I don't think that health potion was really necessary. Because yeah they just get this draggling. I don't think that was a very good health potion. One mana short again. Stay safe. I'll take it yeah, we'll, we'll have this hatchling will still be just fine, even though it got bounced. It'll be just fine. These are dangerous lands. That lifesteal can be important against a leveled up Ezreal that's going to be trying to kill us. That could be important. If they have a leveled up Karma and a leveled up Ezreal, the whole bets are off. Retreat and rummage. The spirit gives to those who listen. Oh, the dragons have been really annoying. So right now my plan next turn hatchling the one one. Sure. Need extra room anyway. Could bounce an eye of the dragon. Obviously they would just replay it. Bounce that. Make them play that again next turn. Don't give them the free spell. Take it all. Game over. Time to go home. Better luck next time. Yeah, I'm very uh yeah, I'm very excited about the future of Legends of Runeterra. I think this game is really well put together. I think it has just a ton of potential moving forward. I think it's kind of perfect for our times. Like it's great, great on mobile. Has a great reward system. 
very fun to play where all the games are close and interesting and have a lot of decisions. It, it, it's just really well put together. All right, so I'm guessing they have another Get Excited. And if I Fury of the North, then they have another Get Excited. But I, I guess we force them to have that. Because, like, they started to play two things. So I think they started to play, like, remo removal spells on two things. Yeah. So force them to have it. We're still doing 10 damage. And they're losing a lot of cards in hand. <laughs> Why are you so good, Karma? Many past lives in a single soul. Never mind, they have infinite cards. No, I don't think that it's possible for this game to be printed on paper. Remember, remember whenever our opponent was running low on cards two spells ago? Oh. Back up to a completely full hand, completely full life total. And killed all my stuff. Yep, back in the day. So these Wayfinders really haven't looked very good. That was the card the, uh, at the beginning I was talking about. How that could be a card to replace would be Wayfinder. Keep running, Kay. Down from the trees. Sure, why not? Let's just have that card. So you definitely see replacing the Wayfinders. Um, yeah, I, I don't think they're really too necessary. They they can pump up like Greenglade Duo a bunch, and yeah, you can get a couple of these in. But especially how I'm more focused on the Freljord, uh, you know, get some more Freljord spells in here. The Wayfinders are worse. And um, a lot of the times, you know, as we talked about, like the strength of this deck is just kind of staying all elusive. And a lot of the times the Wayfinder gets you, you know, like an Omen Hawk, like in the mid game that that's not elusive. And, you know, the Blade Scout is only not elusive anymore. I think the Wayfinder is our worst card in our deck. Um, if we take those out. I don't have anything that I absolutely love putting in there. 
We could play Entreat. What if we play Entreat with no champions? <laughs> what if we just play Entreat with no champions? But yeah, I don't I don't really have anything I love for like this other sl slot. Like, you know, it could be like Starlet Seer. Maybe it's just like Averroes and Sentry to be like a blocker that just like draws you a card. Um I don't know, you know, maybe you play a couple more spells. I kind of forgot Solitary Monk was in our deck because we never had it. We didn't we didn't draw a Solitary Monk a single time out of all of those. Maybe we just maybe you just play a Solitary Monk. Maybe you play like some twin disciplines. Um you know, twin disciplines to to protect your elusives. I don't know. Uh retreat, yeah, retreat's probably just fine. But I don't think I'd want like three retreats, you know? Like maybe you have like one retreat. That can be just fine. It's it's perfect with Shadow Assassin, of course. But yeah, I could see playing one retreat. There's nothing that I like love as a three of. It would you'd probably like split this up a little bit. Yeah, you know, like maybe like a, a yeah, you know, maybe like another solitary monk and a retreat and I don't know, like a like a starlet seer. Uh, to do some some pumping and, and a block or a twin disciplines or another deny or even you can go spirits refuge if you want for like protection plus some other some life steal against like the aggro decks um there's nothing that's perfect you know if, if you want to you know if you want to get them with the battle fury you know be my guest go ahead and you know you can get them with a battle fury I've always thought the Empyreon is kind of underrated. The Empyrean. That that card's kind of underrated. Dragon's Rage some people. Probably not. Dragon's Rage. I wouldn't really mind a hearth guard too much but yeah so probably probably like a, i think like the realistic options are like a spirit's refuge a deny a i don't know uh twin disciplines a starlet's here I mean, honestly, Sonic Wave is is certainly reasonable as a way you can give pump. You can kind of use this as removal. It's reasonable. I don't know. Like, there's there's some things to do with that slot. Like, maybe you just want to play one Kinku Wayfinder just to have in your deck. Sure. I wouldn't even really mind like a brittle steel that like helps you win races. Yeah, you don't. I mean, you don't. Why would you ever play Imperion over Wayfinder? I mean, there's there's a good amount of games that you don't have a lot of allies, but yeah, the hatchling. You know, it gets Mystic shotted and stuff. I don't know, this Imperion's just kind of nice. It's just like a big old thing. I guess, so I guess I would probably say one monk, one retreat, and one... Probably a second deny. So not even that good, or maybe a Spirit's Refuge. Deny is just kind of expensive. It, it is kind of expensive having all your tricks cost four mana. You know, Will of Ionia, Fu Fury of the North, Deny. It is nice having some cheaper things. Yeah, I like... Yeah, so maybe it is just Twin Disciplines, because you can get that extra three points of damage in with Twin D Disciplines also. <laughs> It's a, it's a very versatile card. Yeah, I think Twin Disciplines is probably the card. It, it may be that Twin Disciplines is better than Retreat. So the one thing 
the the one thing about twin disciplines is a lot of time you use it as a protection spell things that we're protecting for the most part are going to be like two and three mana cards like green glade duo Nav navori conspirator shadow assassin usually you get a lot of value protecting bigger things with twin disciplines than just than just those but with that being said our deck does a good job of pumping up these things with like with all of our our pump with like shared spoils and omen hawk and so it usually takes them a little bit of uh damage to whittle down so you can use this as like a health um and health increase as well yeah i mean maybe twin disciplines will even play better than retreat Like the Bloodsworn Pledge. It's another option. It's again four mana. I kind of want to just get a, you know, move away from a four mana card because we're already we already have Fury of the North deny. We saw that a lot of times in our in those games, like where it have, um, you know, like the four mana card in hand, and it was kind of hard to play. I like having like a, at least an option of a card that's not four mana. But yeah, I think I think I'd want to move away from Wayfinder. I think I'm kind of over Kinku Wayfinder. It's not a great card to hit off of. Um, you know, like a lot of those times, like those last, especially like that last game, like we were using our Omen Hawks and our Shared Spoils and everything like that, and pumping up the top cards of our library. And then that top card of our library was the Kinku Wayfinder. And uh, then instead of it being a two three, you know, it was a three four or a four five, and you're just like, well, it's it can't do any damage. Because it's not elusive anyways. What's the point of that thing being pumped up? I'd rather have some other things pumped up. Yeah, so that that's a feel feels bad. I don't think that I don't think the Shadow Seer is very playable. Wouldn't I wouldn't play that card. I guess if you if you if you turn the deck more even more aggressive. You could go with that, but I'm not sure if that's really where the deck needs to be. So that's what I think I would try. I think we'd try one retreat, one solitary monk, one twin disciplines. The reason why I'm saying that it could be just we should be going two twin disciplines, one monk, and get rid of the retreat is be since we do pump up our things with Omen Hawk and Shared Spoils, you don't really want to be returning your things after you pumped them up. That's not something you really want to be doing. Which is also the downside of Solitary Monk. It's also the reason why Solitary Monk's not amazing in this deck. Take Heart, take heart is interesting. I didn't, th I didn't really think about Take Heart. That's pretty interesting. That could be a card. We had damaged allies all the time. That could be a card. Yeah, that could definitely be a card. Yeah, maybe try take heart. One take heart, one twin disciplines, get rid of this retreat. And play the second solitary monk. I am just a little bit worried that it's kind of too many spells. Alright, maybe try that. Maybe try one take heart, one twin disciplines. I do remember that the last time that we played the deck, eight days ago, you know, like out of the five games, probably like three of them or so, like we we played the solitary monk, and the solitary monk was pretty good overall really late game you know like whenever you're in like the windfair hatchling mode like solitary monk's kind of a dead draw i think take it take heart beats twin at disciplines eh. there's just gonna be times where take heart's not where you can't play take heart where you but you could play twin disciplines you won games off the back of the monk for sure so yeah, let's let's get rid of let's get rid of the the um those wayfinders. Play a monk, a take heart, and twin disciplines. If if one of these two cards is performing better than the other, then you know feel free to go two and zero. Oh. 
you know, go, go like two take hard, zero twin disciplines. If you're somebody that, if you're a big believer in take hard, feel free to go two and zero. I mean, I think I just I think they're very close. I kind of wanted to take the coward's way out and split the difference and have a uh, different card for different situation. All right, but there we go. So that's champion list elusives. I'll update the deck list command also like this. Uh, <clears throat> there we go. Um, those of y'all watching on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And of course, leave those comments. Let me know how the deck's going for you. Let me know what you think of Take Heart or Twin Disciplines. Uh, you know, which one's better there. Then you can also just talk about like the, we have the patch update next week. What do you want to see change? What would you change if you were in charge of our patch update? You know, that's always free too. All right, but anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video.